Amen. I've entitled this message today, Do What You Can't. Do What You Can't. And some, some people asked me, said, Pastor, where do you get your inspiration for messages? They're always very creative. And, and I told them, I said, well, you know what? If you keep your eyes open and your ears open, God's speaking all the time. You just have to pay attention. And, and the other day I was watching um, the NBA Finals game one. Remember when Golden State blew out the Cleveland? You probably didn't watch that. People was like, well, the Cleveland won game four. It's because the NBA needed more money, so they had to keep it going. <laughs> Somebody said, Pastor, you can't make jokes about the Cavs. I do what I can. Amen. So I was watching the NBA Finals, and, and this Samsung commercial came out on for this virtual reality headset. And this, I don't know if you saw it, but this ostrich, there's all these ostriches, and he puts the headset on, and it looks like he's flying. So he's running everywhere, knocking things over, trying to fly, keeps falling on his face. Then one day, he takes the virtual reality headset off, and he feels a breeze. And he starts stretching out his wings, and he takes off running. And the next thing you see is him soaring over all the other ostriches. Now, here's the point of the commercial. Ostriches can't fly. Do what you can't. Do what you can't. And I want to introduce you to a, a man in the Bible. His name is Benaiah, and he is a man who stepped out and did what anybody else would have said. You can't do that. Watch this. Here's what the Bible says in 1 Chronicles 11, verse 22. There was also Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, a valiant warrior from Kabzeel. He did many heroic deeds, which included killing two champions of Moab. Another time, on a snowy day, notice the Bible puts that in there, on a snowy day, he chased a lion down into a pit and killed it. Verse 23, once armed only with a club, he killed an Egyptian warrior who was seven and a half feet tall and who was armed with a spear as thick as a weaver's beam. Benaiah wrenched the spear from the Egyptian's hand and killed him with it. Killed the enemy with his own weapon. Deeds like these made Benaiah famous as the three mightiest warriors. He was more honored than the other 30 members, or other members of the 30. These are David's mighty men, though he was not one of the three. And David made him captain of his bodyguard. Sounds like David's making a good move. I mean, if you got a brother who walks up to an, a seven and a half foot Egyptian, kills him with his own weapon, yeah, you can be my bodyguard. I'm cool with that. And, and this guy is a, a person who did what he can't. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Do what you can't. And in order to be like Benaiah, you must face the things you fear with courage. We must face the things. We've all got things we fear in our life. We've all got things that cause us to be afraid. But we must face the things that we fear with courage. This is what Benaiah did. This guy, watch. He climbs down into a pit. Now, it's one thing if I've got the lion in a place where if, 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 you know, if I get nervous, I can run up a tree. He's in the pit. He crawls down in the pit with the lion on a snowy day. Now, I don't know if the ancient Hebrews had ski suits and snow boots, but I kind of like to think he wasn't prepared for this. And here's the thing that boggles my mind. He went after a lion who wasn't even after him. He chased the lion down. The lion wasn't chasing him. He was chasing the lion. This is called courage. It's the courage to go after opportunities. I, want, I don't want you just to see your lions as bad things, and there are some bad lions, but I want you to see your lions as opportunities. Open doors of blessings that you've been hesitant to walk through because you're, you're afraid of what could happen if you, if you walk through that door. I want you to chase the lion. Look at somebody and say, chase the lion. Are you cringing before an opportunity that seems too big for you? I heard a story. There was a very, very, very wealthy man, and he had a, a beautiful daughter, only one daughter, and he didn't want just anybody to marry his daughter. He wanted a man of fearless courage, a valiant man. This is the kind of man he wanted for his daughter, and so 
He didn't know which of the men in the town was good enough for his daughter, so he thought he'd hold a competition. He invited them all up to his big mansion. In the back of the mansion, there was this big swimming pool, and he had all the men of the town line up on one side of the swimming pool. And him and his daughter stood on the other side, but in the swimming pool, he had filled it with alligators and crocodiles and venomous snakes and piranhas. I mean, this pool was just filled with ferocious animals. And the, millionaire, or the, the wealthy man stepped out and said, he said, I will give my daughter's hand in marriage and, fi- and $50 million to the man who swims across this pool. Just then there was a splash. And this brother is swimming with all of his mites. Gators coming after him. Crocodiles trying to bite him. Piranhas nipping at his feet. And he is tearing a cross snake around his neck. And he's fighting as hard as he can to get across the pool. He finally climbs up on the other side out of breath. And the millionaire says, son, this is amazing. You can now have my daughter and I'm going to give you $50 million. And the guy looked at him and said, you can keep your daughter and the money. Just tell me who pushed me in. You got to face opportunities with courage. Here's the big question today. What lion do you need to chase? What lion do you need to chase? Because here's what I've learned about God. God is in the business of working through his people to accomplish seemingly impossible tasks. This is what God does. God wants to use me. I put that in parentheses because I want you to point at yourself and say, God wants to use me. Are you ready? Say it together. Ready? Here we go. God wants to use me. Say it again. God wants to use me. Now point to somebody else and tell them God wants to use you. Now, if there's one thing that'll hold you back from chasing your lions, it's people constantly telling you, you can't. Here's what I've learned about people. People who say you can't weren't there when God planted the seed of potential in your life. So any person telling you, you can't, you can't, you can't, they weren't there when you knew God put a seed in your heart to do something impossible. So don't listen to people, listen to God. Can I get a good amen? So we're going to chase our lions. We're going to chase our lions. Here's step one. Step one of chasing your lion, lay hold on wrong thoughts. Lay hold on the wrong thoughts. The Bible says it like this. As a man thinks within his heart, so is he. Your thoughts follow your life. So you've got to be careful what you're thinking about. Well, where do my thoughts come from? My thoughts come from what I'm focused on. So whatever is in my focus is going to get into my thoughts. And when it gets into my thoughts... I'm going to become whatever I'm thinking about. This is why I've got to be careful what I focus on. I can't just focus on anything, and I can't just focus on anybody. I can't hang around the wrong people. In fact, I'd like to tell you this. Show me your friends. I'll show you your future because you're focused on your friends. And whatever kind of friends you have is the thoughts you're thinking. Their thoughts are becoming your thoughts, and your thoughts are going to determine your life, determine your future. So you got to be careful. Don't just, don't just focus on anything. Here's what I've learned. Both fear and faith are products of focus. Both fear and faith are simple products of focus. A lack of faith is a sign of broken focus. Our faith will rise when we concentrate on the goodness of God. So the more you keep thinking about Russia, North Korea, politics, Trump, What's going on in the world? What's going on at my job? All the negative people that's in my life. The more you focus on that, the more fear is going to be reproduced in your life. Now you wish, I just wish, God would have given us a verse that we could stand on that shows us the power of our thoughts. Hold on, Elder Robert. I think he did. Didn't he say something like this? Whatever things are good. Whatever things are holy, whatever things are pure, whatever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Do not set your mind on things below, but set your mind on things above. Why? I got to get faith in my life. And the only way I'm going to get faith operating in my life is if I start focusing on the goodness of God. 
I know government's bad, but God is good. I know the world's a mess, but God is good. I know what's happening inside, but God is good. I'm going to focus on God. And my thoughts are going to determine my future. Got to lay hold of this lion. Somebody shout, chase the lion. Got to chase the lion. Here's, here's number two, interrogate the enemy. Interrogate the enemy. You've been told that if a thought comes into your life, you need to let it go. Let it go. Get, get the thought of your life. I'm telling you the opposite today. I'm telling you if a thought comes into your life, capture it, hold it, and then interrogate it. Interrogate your thoughts. Here's why. That demonic spirit that brought that thought into your life was not sent without a purpose. If we interrogate what's intimidating us, we'll begin to discover the very reason we were born. How do I know my purpose? I got to interrogate my thoughts. Why did the enemy send this spirit into my life? Why did he send this thought into my life? It must be a clue to my purpose and why God put me on this planet. Here's what I'm trying to say. Wherever the thoughts from Satan are attacking us shows us where our greatest strengths are. So in other words, if the thought of stinginess is coming into your life, it could be a sign that God has called you to be generous. And the enemy knows that if they ever become generous, start being generous, God's going to bless them in abundance. So I've got to make them stingy. I've got to attack them with thoughts of lack and thoughts of not enough. Because if they ever start being generous, they'll never want for anything again. Why did the spirit of fear and anxiety come into your life? Could it be that God has called you to stand in front of people and influence lives on a global scale so if he can hit you when you're small, he can stop you from ever having an impact on a large scale? I had to intimidate my thoughts, interrogate my thoughts. I had this, I, I've told you about my fear of flying. I've told you about how three days before flight, I would almost lock myself in the house. I would get sick, sick to my stomach. I, I couldn't eat. I couldn't think. I would walk around like a zombie. I mean, I was totally zoned out, focused on this terrifying fear, this paralyzing fear of flying. Now, one day I had to set the enemy down. I had to capture him, hold him, and interrogate him. Why are you showing up in my life? Why have you made me so afraid of flying? Of all the things you could have made me afraid of, spiders, I get that. There's no purpose in spiders. I mean, no purpose for my life. But, but, but why, why have you hit me with flying? Why do you want me to be so afraid of flying? See, the enemy knew that one day God was going to send Pastor John Gray, and he was going to invite me to fly with him all over America and see what God is doing in churches all over America. So if he can stop me from ever getting on a plane, he can stop me from fulfilling my God-given purpose as a pastor. So I had to interrogate, and once I found out his plan, I knew the purpose for why God created me. Come on, some of you have been attacked by a thought, attacked by a lie, attacked by an enemy, and you're interrogating him right now, and God's saying, that's why I put you on this planet. The enemy gave away your assignment. I feel like preaching today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Got to capture that lion. Somebody say, chase the lion. Chase the lion. Here's number three, overcome the obstacle. Overcome the obstacle. We are all going to have obstacles. But God is a God that loves to hide opportunity in every obstacle. So you can either see it as obstacle or you can see it as opportunity. I'm going to make the decision today because if my life is following my thoughts and the enemy has sent these intimidating thoughts, I found out why they're here, then, then there's an obstacle in front of me. But rather than seeing it as an obstacle, what would happen if I simply changed my perception and saw it as an opportunity for God to show himself strong? What would happen? Here's what David said. David said this in Psalms 28, 7, the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Now I want to talk about this heart trusted in him. I had a moment. I was on my way to a, a, a church 
conference up in Columbus on Wednesday and uh, not speaking, just, in, just to enjoy the service. And God just spoke to my life and encouraged me. But on my way up there, I had a, had a moment with God. You ever had a moment with God? It's like he shows up and sits right down in the passenger seat and starts talking to you. And, and I had a moment and I had a revelation about trusting God like I've never experienced before. And I began to say out of my mouth, God, I know what I want and I know what I believe, but I know that I trust you. And if I don't get what I want and I don't get what I believe, I'm still going to trust you. And when you get to that place, you're saying, God, I'm not in control. God, I'm giving you control. You are the strength and the shield of my life and my heart trust in you. And when you can get to the place that you say, if it turns out good, I trust God. But if it turns out bad, I trust God. When you get to that place, you can be like David. And notice he put helped in the past tense. He's saying every time there was an obstacle, I trusted God. He was my strength and my shield. And when I look back, I can see how he turned every obstacle into an opportunity to show himself strong. He helped me there. He helped me. Because if you don't have a problem, you don't need any help. But if I can look back and say, God, help me there and help me there. All I'm saying is every time the obstacle showed up, God showed up with it with an opportunity to show himself strong somebody give him a big praise in the house you gotta you gotta think like a lion chaser normal people don't crawl down in a pit on a snowy day with a lion normal people don't do that only crazy people who believe they serve a god who can do anything here here's what i'm saying lion chasers know that the bigger their god is the smaller their lions become You remember that verse, you remember that verse in the Bible where David said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Help me with that for a second, okay? The Bible says that God is so big that he sits on the circle of the earth. Heaven is his throne. Earth is his footstools. He beholds us like grasshoppers. He, he takes a pile of dust, throws it out into nothing, and they become stars and planets. He speaks and light shows up. And, and, and God, this is a God, he is infinitely big. He is infinitely powerful. You cannot even measure his magnitude of his greatness. So how are you going to make him bigger? You can't. But the other day, I got a magnifying glass, and I taught Sage how to burn ants. If you've never done it, it's great. And she's out there, and she's burning these little ants. And and I noticed something about a magnifying glass. When you hold it over the ant, the ant becomes bigger. Hold on, no. The ant is still the same exact size. Just my perception of the ant becomes bigger. And I've said it before. Stop telling God how big your mountains are and start telling your mountains how big your God is. When you magnify God, you can't make him any bigger than he already is. But by faith, you hold up a magnifying glass and you make him bigger in your own life. And I promise you this, when God starts getting bigger in your life, the giants and the lions start getting smaller in your life. Here's another thing about lion chasers. Lion chasers understand that playing it safe is risky. You can't afford to play it safe. You can't afford to play it safe. You need to take some risks. Have fun. Enjoy life. Take risks. Lion chasers understand that playing it safe is risky. This lion wasn't chasing him. Benaiah is chasing the lion. Why did he do this? Well, I believe maybe he understood something in that The lion's not a problem today, but just because it's not a problem today doesn't mean it won't be a problem tomorrow. So rather than wait for it to become a problem and harm one of my family, I'm going to go ahead and deal with it today. But listen to me, I promise you this, there are going to be lions that show up as God opportunities in your life. And you're going to feel fear and you're going to feel trepidation of whether or not you should climb in that pit and tackle that lion. And some of you are going to walk away and say, nope, I'm not going to worry about it. The lion that you don't deal with today will come back tomorrow, but he won't come back as an opportunity. He will come back as regret. And there is one thing worse than failure, and that is regret. I would rather look back at my life and see where I tried and failed than to look back at my life and regret that I didn't try at all. 
Here we were on Town Street, had a building with no debt, owned property. We could get to church at 9.30 in the morning if we wanted to because everything was already set up. And then all of a sudden, God starts stirring in my heart, you need to take the church mobile. Now, hold on, God. This doesn't make a lot of sense. We're out of debt. We own this building. We own this property. God said, take a mobile. Take a mobile. I'm doing something bigger. Take them mobile. And I had to, I was, I was trying to convince you at the same time. I was trying to convince myself of why we should go mobile. And we did it, and we launched out. And I would venture to say that half of you in this room today would not be here if we were still on Town Street. You are here today because we took a step of faith. We took a risk. We decided to trust God and look at what the Lord has done. Can somebody give him a big hand clap of praise? We've got to chase our lion. And here's, here's the fourth step of chasing your lion. No more running. Preacher, I haven't ran in 20 years, so I'm good on that one. No, it's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about running in your faith. God never sounds the, the trumpet of retreat. God wants you to move forward. No more running from your enemy. Yeah, but the devil's attacking me. I got good news for you. Satan always attacks those next in line for a promotion. The fact that the devil is beating up on me right now means that God is getting ready to bless me. There's a door of opportunity about ready to open for me. I don't know how it's coming. I don't know where it's coming. But the very fact that the enemy is attacking me right now is a sure sign God is getting ready to pour out his favor on my... Am I talking to anybody in the room today? Hallelujah. Watch this. Psalm 23, 5, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Now, hold on, God, why in the world did you invite the devil to this party? Why couldn't you just prepare a table for me and you? God, why? Because I'm tired of you running. You're running from an enemy that's already been defeated. You're running from an enemy that I defeated on Calvary. I already took, you're, you're, you're in the cleanup process. You're not having to fight for victory. You're fighting from victory. I've already given you the victory on Calvary. And now I'm bringing a table and I'm inviting your enemy to sit across from you from the table because you need to face it. Stop running from it and start facing it because I need to show you I've already given you victory over it. And to show you how I've already given you victory, I'm inviting your, your enemies to a dinner where I'm going to pour my blessings out and they're going to have to watch you be blessed and they're not going to be able to do a thing about it. I'm inviting the enemy of sickness. I'm inviting the enemy of lack. I'm inviting the enemy of fear and depression. And I'm going to say, sit down while I pour out my blessing. My, you anoint my head with oil and my cup is overflowing in the presence of my enemy. Somebody give God a big praise in the house. Woo! Feels good in here today. Tables in the presence of my enemies, not away from them. He wants me to face it, face it. So why aren't we chasing these lions? Well, we got to deal with these lions. We, 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 we've got to deal with some things that are holding us back from chasing our lions. And I want to give you four quick things that's keeping us from chasing our lions. Number one, you're afraid of the past. You would love to chase this line of opportunity. You would love to see what God could do, but you are so ashamed of who you've been and what you've done. And I've come to give you a word today, and that is this. God does not consult with your past to determine your future. So why do you keep talking to it? Paul said, this one thing I've learned, leaving those things which are behind and reaching forth to what is before. Leave your past behind. I know you were messed up. Every person in this room was messed up, maybe at varying levels. Some of you are a little more crazy than other people, but leave it behind you. Chase your lion. Open the business. Start the restaurant. Start the clothing line. Dream big. Take the risk. Do what takes faith. Another reason you don't want to chase your lion is because you're afraid of the crowd. Well, what will people say? People have told me my whole life, I can't. 
Prove them wrong. Yeah. Do you have any fight in you? Because I got some fight in me. Yeah. And I'll tell you one thing that lights me up is when somebody says I can't do something. I think it started from my parents when they said I couldn't stay up late at night. And I was determined, I'm going to find a way. Can't play with fire. I'm going to find a way. When people tell you you can't, take it as a challenge. I accept your challenge. Because I'm going to show you I can't do it in myself. But with me and my God, nothing is impossible. We can do anything. I'm not listening to the crowd. I'm not afraid of the crowd anymore. Here's a third thing that's holding you back. You're afraid of taking the first step. You keep asking God to do it first. If you show up, God, if you do this first, God, if you come through with this and God says, that's not the way I work. You move first, then I move. See, we think, well, it, well it, it, you know, it, God, if you show up, I'll have the faith. If you show up and you do this, I'll have the faith to take the first step. I, I've heard this. I, th- I think this is a great quote. Fear is not the opposite of faith. The opposite of faith is certainty. Because if you're certain about something, you don't need faith. So if you're set waiting for God to show up with certainty, you're not walking by faith. You're walking by sight. But when you take the first step and you don't even see where you're stepping, now you're walking by faith. And here's the fourth thing. You're afraid of failure. There are so many people in this room that you've got big dreams and big visions and you know God has called you to do some amazing things, but you're so afraid to take the step because what if I fail? What what if it doesn't work out? Well, let me ask you a question. What if you fail? Get up and do it again. And if you fail again, get up and do it again and again. I read a great story in the Bible. The Bible says the disciples were in a boat in the middle of the sea and there was a terrible storm. And they see Jesus walking on the water and they think it's a ghost. And Peter has the courage to cry out and says, Lord, is that you? And Jesus said, yeah. And he said, Lord, if it's you, ask me to come walk on the water with you. And Jesus said, well, get on out here, brother. So Peter jumps out of the boat and he starts walking on the water. I don't know how many steps he took. Maybe he took five, maybe he took 10. Maybe he walked 30 feet, 40 feet, 50 feet out in the water. But the Bible says when he got out there, his eyes got off Jesus and he started looking at the wind and the waves. And when he got focused, when he, when he lost sight of the word and got focused on the winds and the waves, he began to sink in the water and prayed the shortest prayer. Lord, save me. The Bible says Jesus reached down and picked him up out of the water, took him back to the boat. And I can hear, I can hear John and, and Bartholomew and Thomas, Thomas, I doubted you would walk on the water. I just, you know, And I can hear them all talking, you know, Peter, you're such a failure. Here you had this great moment, and you failed. You looked at the wind, you looked at the waves, and you sank in the water. You're such a failure. And if I'd have been Peter, I'd have looked back at them, and I'd have said, hang on, brothers. There's only one of us that can say we walked on the water. I may have failed when I got out there, but I'm the only one who has a testimony that I did it. I'm the only one who has a testimony that I walked where none of you ever walked and you never will walk. See, you may fail in doing it, but at least you'll have the testimony that I lived by faith. So here's what I'm, four thoughts I want to leave you with. Here's number one. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Don't stop believing. That'd be a great song title. Don't stop believing. <laughs> Jeff, can you work up something with that? That'd be, I just felt that, man. That'd be a great, I think that'll be a hit. Don't stop believing. We can name our band Trip or Destination or Journey, something like that. It'd be great. <laughs> Don't quit. Don't stop. Here's the second one. Do it. Do it. Just do it. Whatever God has put in your heart, do it. Whatever the risk he's calling you out on, do it. Wherever he's calling you to walk, just do it. Just do it. Start the business. Start the restaurant. Uh, Can the sauce or can the recipe and sell it to people. Just do it. Whatever God's put in your heart, just do it. I talked to a young man last week. He's he's been drafted to play uh, professional basketball in Belarus. And he was at our church last week, and I'm standing there like, and I looked at him and I said, you know what? 
keep your vision big because God's going to make you more than just a professional athlete. He's going to make you an influencer of people. Just do it. Amen. Here's number three. Number three, hang in there. Anybody remember that poster in school or that little cat hanging on that rope? I've never encouraged you to buy a cat poster, but buy this one. It's hang in there, that little cat hanging on. And remind yourself today with faith, with the help of God and the help of the Holy Spirit, I can make it. I can hang in there. I can make it through this. And, and number four, take the risk. Just take the risk. So let's do a quick review. Lay hold on wrong thoughts. Interrogate the enemy. Overcome the obstacle. No more running. And when you do that, you'll chase your lions. Can I get a big praise in the house? Give God a big praise. You all got one of these rulers as you came in. If you don't care, take it out right now. I'm only going to take about two more minutes and I'm finished. And then we're going to pray and bless our graduates. You guys can go ahead and, and roll the television off if you want to. So you got this little ruler. If you don't have one, you can pick one up, up on your way out. Now look, I'm going to do something with this. You're going to do something with this. Don't, don't throw your trash in the floor. So just follow these instructions. So you've got a, you've got a ruler here from zero to 110, okay? So what I want you to do is, this is gonna be the first step, I'm gonna have you go down to the end of the ruler and pick the age that you think you'll die. So my granddad lived to 99, my grandma lived to 97, so I'm gonna go ahead and go for 98, bend it, and then tear that off. And take that little piece and just throw it in your neighbor's purse. <laughs> right? And then what I want you to do is I want you to go back to the start of the ruler and I want you to find the age you are right now. Okay? So I'm 37. I'll be 38 July 21st. In case you were taking notes, remember that. <laughs> Birthday is July 21st. So I'm 37, so I'm going to go ahead and make my tear right there. And I'm going to tear that off. Don't do what I did and throw your trash on the ground. You, you keep put it in your pocket. Do you see what I'm left with? This is all I have left to make a difference. This is all I have left to impact the world for Jesus Christ and fulfill my God-given purpose. And when I get to the end of this little ruler, I can either look back full of regret saying, well, there went my 40s and I never accomplished anything and there went my 50s and I never did anything and there went my 60s and I lived by fear and I didn't do anything. I didn't take any risks. I didn't take any chances. I've played it safe and you'll get to the end of your ruler and you'll look back and say, I'm so full of regret for what I could have done and I didn't. But what if you looked at the ruler instead of Instead of the terrible thought of getting to the end and looking back, what if you stood right here and you started looking forward? And you started saying, what am I going to accomplish in these next decades? What am I going to accomplish in the years I have left? I'm going to change lives. I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to find my purpose. And I'm going to use it for the glory of God. I'm going to invent something that's never existed before. I'm going to open and start the business. I'm going to open the restaurant. I'm going to make a difference. The world will know that I'm here in the years that I have left. I will live an unforgettable life for the glory of God. I want you to take this, put it somewhere safe, and you just remember every year, you're just going, you're going to tear off a little more of this. Listen, you got to make every day count. You, gotta, you can't play it safe. You got to take the risks and dream big and do the impossible. I'm, I want to challenge you, go do what you can't. What everybody else has said you can't do. Those of you that have graduated and you're about to go into college or you're getting out of college into a career, do what you can't. Don't be a statistic like everybody else. You be the one that stood out on his own and said, I did what everybody else said I couldn't do. Now, God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for faith that is filling this room. And right now, God, I believe that dead dreams and visions are coming back to life. 
I thank you, Heavenly Father God, that dreams that have been lying dormant on the inside of your believers, you're stirring them up right now. There's been visions they, they even forgot about, but Lord, you're bringing them back to their mind. You're calling them to be lion chasers. You're calling them to do the impossible. You're calling them to stand out and make a difference. And when they do, you'll receive glory. Let us make the most of every day is my prayer. And live it to the fullest. Father, when I die, I don't want there to be one regret in my life. One I wish I would have. Not one. I wish I'd have walked through that door. I wish I'd have taken that chance. I wish I'd have taken that risk. But I want to look back and say, my life was full of adventures. Yes, I failed. Yes, I messed up. But I walked through every door that God opened for me without fear. I chased every lion you brought into my life. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're in here and you don't know Jesus, you haven't even started living yet. But you want to know him as your savior today, I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer. If you'll believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you'll be saved and you'll be as assured of heaven as if you're already there. Are you ready? Pray this with me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I'm, a I'm a sinner and I need a savior. I, need a savior. I ask you to forgive me ask you to of, forgive all of, my sins. of all of my sins. Erase my past. Erase my past. Give me a home in heaven, me a home in heaven. with you. Teach me, Teach me to live every day, day faith-filled, faith filled, looking to do, looking to do the, impossible. the impossible. Jesus, Jesus I'm going to live this life as you show me how. Show me how. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it from your heart, you're as assured of heaven as if you're already there. Let's give God a big praise for his word today. Thank him for faith that's in our lives. Put this somewhere safe. Hang this up where you work. Hang this on your refrigerator. Put this in your home. I want you to look at it every day and remind yourself. I may not even be promised tomorrow, so I'm going to make this day count. And I'm going to live it to the fullest. As you're sitting there, I'm going to ask you to participate with us in just a second. But right now, I'm going to ask all of our high school graduates and college graduates, will you come up here on the platform with me and City Gate? In just a moment, I'm going to ask you to help me speak a blessing over their life. So... High school, college, come on up here. City Gate, give them a big God bless you as they make their way up here. This is so amazing. Look at all of them lining up down here. You ought to praise God. Oh, this is awesome. In the fullness of your so proud grace. of you. Didn't she sing in wonderful today? Wasn't she wonderful? You're great. You lived Congratulations. Congratulations. Come on up here, guys. Line up right here. You lived me up. Congratulations. Congratulations. Fullness of your grace. Congratulations. In the power Come on, we're gonna make room for you. You lived me up. Look at this. Brandon, come here real quick. I want to introduce you to Brandon. I love his little nephews. He's got the best nephews in the world. And I remember his first year in college, his mom called me and she said, Pastor Eric, will you pray for Brandon? He's, he's thinking about dropping out. He's thinking about stopping. It. We prayed for him and he graduated college and he's going to be successful and God's going to do great things in his life. Proud of you, man proud of you. You're a lion chaser. Come on up here. Come on up here. Come on up here. Make room. You ought to give God praise. This is incredible. Wow. This is incredible. You tell me our future isn't bright. We got a bright future standing up here. I have, I have so many wonderful things I could, I could just say about so many of you. Serge is, is just so faithful. You can be seated. Serge is so faithful. He's an incredible artist. And, and Cameron back here, I call him my, my dealer because he used to work at Great American Cookie Company. So he'd hook me up with free cookies. So I called him my dealer. This is so beautiful, so beautiful. And Michael, man, I'm proud of you. I've been around his whole life. so. 
for his whole life. So proud of you and Eddie. I know God's got a call on Eddie's life and, and God's just going to use you, man. And uh, I, I hope you receive that interrogating the enemy because I believe the enemy's given you a clue to what God's going to do in your future. I believe that. I'm so proud of you all. I really am. Well, I want to speak a declaration. We believe faith is believing and speaking. We believe that life and death is in the power of the tongue. So I'm going to make a declaration over their life. Joshua 21, 43. The Lord gave Israel all the land he swore to give to their fathers. They took possession of it and lived in it. The Lord gave them rest all around according to all he swore to their fathers. Not a man among their enemies stood before them. And the Lord delivered all their enemies into their hands. Not a single word of all the good things the Lord has spoken over the children of Israel failed. They all came to pass. We declare over your lives, you are a possessor. Yeah. You will believe unconditionally, trust wholeheartedly, follow resolutely. When times get tough and you get tired, you won't back up, back off, back down, back out, or backslide. You will move forward and possess what's yours by God's grace. We declare that you will not back down. Never be ashamed to let the world know of Christ's goodness and mercy. Your worship is real. Your praise is powerful. You will not be quiet. You cannot be silenced. You will not be ignored. No adversary can stand against you because God is for you. We declare, he said, you will. God's promised future has become your present reality. You walk by faith now. You live in victory now. You are healed now. You've made your choice. The verdict is in. Your decision is irrevocable. You're going God's way. Failure's no option. We declare over your life, God is on your side. You'll never know a need that he can't meet. You'll never face an obstacle he can't overcome. The favor of the Lord is on your life. Doors will open for you. Opportunities will come easy for you. Challenges will fuel you and blessing will find you. And for me and Kim, we believe in you and the great calling God has placed in and on you. This is just one more step leading to your divine summit. Climb with clarity and vision. Never lose heart. Your promise is before you. And Kim and I, we stand behind you. We'll see you at the top. I want you to join with me, stretch your hands out, and we're going to speak a blessing over their lives. This may take a while. This is so wonderful. Come on, help me, City Gate Church. Lord, I just thank you for this moment, this miracle moment. And from this miracle, I pray that today would become a miracle marker in their life, that they'll never forget that God, you touched their life here in a supernatural way. That today, you are taking every in limit off of their life. You're taking limits off of their minds. You're taking limits, Father, off of their faith. That, Father, they're going to believe you for the impossible, and you're going to show up, and that's exactly what you're going to do. I thank you, God, that opportunities are going to come easy for them. Blessing is going to find them favor is going to cover them. I thank you, God, that right now you're taking the wrong influences out of their life and you're bringing the right ones into their life, that you're setting them up for kingdom connections, that, Father, they're going to connect to the right people that are going to propel them to their destiny. They have not quit. They've been faithful. They've stood strong. And today, God, I just pray your blessings and your anointing and your favor over their life use them set them up for greatness let us look back on this day and say we were there the moment you launched them into their destiny we didn't see all you were going to do but you saw it god and we give you praise come on and stand to your feet let's praise god and let's honor all the graduates Praise God, praise God. City Gate, we're going to close. I'm going to speak a blessing over you at the end of service today. Our care pastors will be down here if you need prayer. 
in any area of your life. If you gave your heart to Jesus today, go back to Connect Central. We have a gift for you. If you're a first-time guest, head back there. We got a gift for you. Thank you for being here today. We love you. We honor you. Father, I speak over their life right now, and I declare your richest blessings. I thank you, Father, that today, today, enemies are going to be defeated in front of their face. And I thank you, God, that they're going to face their future with faith and not fear. And you're going to accomplish extraordinary things that we're releasing out of this room. Lion chasers who are about to believe big, take big risks, and dream even bigger than they ever have before. Bless your people is my prayer in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. God bless you. Strength like no